Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, uh, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to uh, Vineyard Haven to the senior senator for my presentations or see my other seminars, you know, Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's on Martha's Vineyard, that means right there. They don't want to go to the mainland. They don't want to go to San Diego. They definitely don't want to go to Nantucket. They want to stay on Martha's Vineyard. And so the point of the show is, who do you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about to stay just where you are if you identify with Frank and Mary? So my friend, um, Sandy Cordovi, who has been doing this show with me for a long time, it, but and actually everybody knows her, only a few people know me. Sandy knows everybody. And so I asked her to get these wonderful guests so that we can talk about people and the programs on the island. And Sandy had suggested this, especially in these COVID times, no plays more important than your druggist. So Sandy, whom do we have today? And what are we talking about? Thanks, Arthur. Happy, happy day to everybody. Um, so today we have my dear friend, David Holmberg who is the store manager for Leslie's Drugstore in Vineyard Haven. And David's gonna help us just sort of talk a little bit about what's going on with pharmacies in general on the island in COVID and some of the special things that the pharmacies have been doing. And certainly uh, Leslie's is right up there leading the pack with that. Leslie's interestingly, we think was opened in 1949, David. And, and um, so it's our longest standing pharmacy and right there you know, in the middle of Main Street. I remember back in the seventies, when I was in high school going down, they still had the soda fountain there and, um, and uh, what, a, what a great place. So David is also an advanced certified pharmacy technician. I think I got that right, didn't I, David? And, um, yep. and is my go-to guy. I mean, he, whatever I need, whether it's over the counter or behind the counter or whatever it is, David figures it out. And um, so, and he's been essential in me helping Get our elders taken care of through this pandemic and um and beyond and before that so david thank you so much for coming on and, and correct anything that i said that i mixed up there uh thank you for having me uh, it's nice to meet everybody uh no nope, you got everything right i am an advanced certified pharmacy technician so and the store manager for leslie's pharmacy i've been working here since i was about 14 so about 18 years now um and yeah, I've been trying to do everything I can to help any, anybody during the pandemic and before and going forward. So David, what is that? So we've had some, well, before we get going on that, and, and we don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but just to just sort of lay anyone's concerns and fears to rest. I know that there was a time at the end of last year where there was a concern on the part of, and I'm sure many, many um, other pharmacies, but as well, as Leslie's as a small, you know, family owned pharmacy that you'd be able to keep going. And, and so I think it'd be just great to just spend one minute to sort of be laying everyone's fears about that. Yes, um, there was the chance that we were gonna be closing at the end of the year um, by my parents' choice who are the owners. Um, but I have worked very hard alongside with my father to keep everything going and hopefully getting a partner to really keep everything going, but everything is very positive right now and looks very good. And I don't see any problems in the future. And the store is back open now, right? The store is back open yes. and people can go inside and- Yes, um, right now we have it limited to 10 people at a time. Um, hopefully people will just send one person from the household, but we understand if you can't, I don't want to, you to leave your children in the car or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you're more than welcome to come in. Um, we are still doing curbside for people who are not comfortable coming in. And we do do deliveries for other people that really can't leave their house or are COVID positive and should not leave their house. That's so amazing. I mean, what a huge help that was throughout the entire pandemic. I mean, David, I, I know you saw the same thing and probably a lot more of it than I did, but we literally had elders who were opting to take their meds every other day instead of every day as ordered because they were nervous about or couldn't leave the house and, and go out and get refills. Um, what, were, what were some of the pieces of that that you saw? Uh, I saw the same thing, people refilling things very late, 
because we get notified by most people's insurances on blood pressure meds, diabetes, um, diabetic meds, and um, cholesterol meds if they're behind schedule on refilling. And there was a lot this past year. And a few that I talked to, it was because they just didn't want to leave or couldn't leave and or were afraid to leave. And so they opted to take their pills every other day or cut it down to a half or it really wasn't good. Do you see that turning now? Is it getting a little better as more and more people are getting vaccinated or are you still running up against the same thing? Um, I think it's become a little bit better, but it's still scary for a lot of the elderly, even with the vaccine, because it's still very unknown. Well, and a lot of their caregivers that were doing those kinds of errands for them and not back yet, you know, they're yeah. still home with kids that are still homeschooling and things like that. So the, the, our elders are also dependent a lot on, on the caregivers being available to go to Leslie's or, or Conroy's exactly. or Vineyard Scripts or Triangle Pharmacy and, and get those things. So it is, it's still a, a big issue, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Of- Talk about a tough issue though, of like the kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. The notion of not being able to go to the, not, we being worried about going to the drugstore because you might get sick and therefore you don't get the pills, which are the things that are keeping you from getting sick. That's a real, that's really hard. That's really, really hard. Yeah. 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 It's been tough. And so one of the things that, that you guys did that was a godsend for so many, and and to be fair, um, so did some of the other pharmacies is is you, you developed a delivery program um, for those people that really needed it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, um, we never did delivery before on a case by case basis we would, but um, it kind of forced us to really take a look at it and figure out what we can do to help anybody that needs something. So even if you're not our normal customer, we, we would, um, even just over the counter items, prescription items, both. Um, pay my credit card over the phone or I take cash when I drop it off. But we usually do the deliveries after we close, my dad and I, um, unless somebody's desperate and needs it during the day, then I will run out quickly and do it. But it's kind of put us into that position where we needed to figure something out. And I'm hoping to grow on it. It was a godsend. I have to say there were so many times that you and I were meeting up at 5 30 or 6 o'clock at night somewhere yeah. to hand off or or just dropping something off on someone's back porch and knocking on the door and you know sort of like a may basket right I mean it yeah. was it was what what we saw happening with the pharmacy community and our community and making sure that people could get the things that they need and like you said it wasn't just prescriptions and, and serious blood pressure medications it was toothpaste and yeah. depends and powder and soap and it was anything they needed and and what it's been a tremendous help and i'm so grateful to the pharmacies that did that and it's nice to hear that hopefully it can be grown on that, yeah. that's a really that's a really interesting point that of course for seniors who are, who go to who would regularly go to the pharmacy it, it's a destination you're going to be going and therefore you'd be picking up you, you that would be part of your routine you'd be picking up all that other stuff while you're there, because you're there anyway to pick up your meds. And so yep. the notion of, of I, I guess that leads to a question that I was in my mind as you were describing that. Did you, did you say you're kind of anticipating that this may be kind of become more part of your business model, even in a post COVID environment, that, you, that, that this kind of brought broader outreach to folks? That's really uh, interesting. I would really like it too. I've been thinking about it for quite a while now and wanted to start something and i think this kind of got us going fast track um i'm hoping to get a more streamlined process of everything going on um and maybe start with just the elderly housing units at first and then branch out to more private citizens and stuff like that that is so needed so David, I, I just have to ask kind of as background, because as I said at the beginning, Sandy knows everybody. I don't know anybody, right? Mm-hmm. So so have, are you, have you been, were you kind of thinking about this kind of throughout your life? Were you thinking that you were going to be in this business? Because you, you mentioned that your, 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 your folks were, were in the business and that you've done it. Did you always yeah, kind of figure my, that this was what you were going to do? 
my dad's been a pharmacist for or at Leslie's for about 30 years now. Um, he bought it 18 and a half years ago off of Leslie Leland. Um, and I started working here as a kid just to help out. And then I slowly just started doing more and more. I see. And here I, I am. Think the, I think the thing that people don't realize, and because I've worked very closely with a few uh, docs over my years, um, in nursing, I think one of the things that people don't realize is that pharmacists are the go-to for the docs often. You know, I, you know, oh, yeah. many times we'd be trying to figure out a dosing on something or something, and the doctor would say to me, "Call, call the pharmacist and ask them, you know, what they're recommending." And and pharmacists are amazing at just helping, not only to figure out, you know, where the things are over the counter in the store, but just. We, as medical people, go to the pharmacist all the time to help consult on, you know, if I need to trade this, if this person is now allergic to that medication, what should I try instead? David, can you speak uh, just about the overall scope of practice, so to speak, of the pharmacist? Yeah, it's definitely like that. A lot of offices recommend patients calling the pharmacist rather than the doctor's office because pharmacists went to school for medications. Specifically, doctors went to school for a whole broad range of things, including medicine, but they didn't really dive as deep into interactions and allergies and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a lot of doctors do use pharmacists as resources for the right dosage, the right type of medication, what's next if this didn't work kind of thing. How, so a lot of our people, sorry to interrupt you, a lot of our people are like, Oh, I found this pill on the floor. I don't know what it is. Here's mm -hmm. what it says on it. And what, and I call you all the time. I'm like, David, yeah. I got this oblong orange pill that says L4 on it. What is that? And, and yep. in seconds, I can yep. get the name of that medication and know what it is. Exactly. We have a program for that, the, the ID medications. And it's very helpful because a lot of people call. <laughs> what and is course, that? One, and, and of course, once again, I as a layman, you know, you all know, you, everybody knows what they know, you know, and that's why you try to stay in the little world of, that's why I do elder law, that's all I do, that's what I, under, what's what I get, you know. I had no idea that that's, that, that's part of the, those are part of the things that you do. I had no idea. I assumed, I just assumed that it was always the doctor that figured all of that out. And as you're describing that, I'm saying to myself, and as Sandy's describing it, I'm saying to myself, so doctors must really get bonded with you you know, or with like mm -hmm. you and your dad with, with people that be, because that this is high risk stuff, right. To be, to be yep. going in and saying, well, you know, we're thinking about substituting something for another, but what do you think about that? Or like, what is the dosage? This is like, this is like, it, I, I hate to sound extreme, but this is potentially life or death stuff. Right. Yeah, so be. To, to be able to say as a doctor, because as you pointed out, David, you know, especially the, the, the general, the, the PCPs, the primary care physicians, right? Mm -hmm. For whom I have like the utmost respect because they are expected to know enough about a ton of stuff so that they can kind of really look at you holistically and figure out what you're, you're doing. But, but as a result of that, you can't expect them to know a lot, you know, a, a lot about kind of what particular, you know, what's happening on the, in the, I hate to call it the drug market, you know, but what is happening in the market where, you know, new products are showing up and generics are showing up and, and, and their costs are different. So and that, they don't know what's covered by insurances and what's not and right. that kind of stuff. So it really is a collaborative effort and patient and care. I had heard, and I had heard that before. I, I know I was talking to, um, there's a wonderful person on the other island, the island that must not be named. Uh, named David McKay, who had worked at the hospital for a long time uh, as their kind of the kind of general outreach. He was their person. And now one of the things that he does is he helps people with Medicare D plans. Right. Mm -hmm. But one, but but he mentioned that he talked about how so often the doctors will will prescribe something from you, but they have no concept of the pricing. Right. What's the, you know, what it would, the, the difference between one, one non-generic and another non-generic generic, or one become, you know, non-generic and a generic. And, and for, and for seniors, it's like, those are big, that's a big deal. That's, that's the, oh, yeah. you know, that's like putting food on the table, you know? Well, so we were talking, be a huge and difference. I were talking before the show about, 
what happened with the mail. Remember, David, what happened with oh. the mail back in the fall and, and the, the post offices, especially on the vineyard, but I think everywhere, were ridiculously backed up. And lots of folks get their medications from a mail order because they think they have to, you know, the, the big, you know, insurance companies work out deals with these great big in um, this Walmart and Walgreens and CVS, and they, they do a wonderful job. But, um, but when you can't get your mail and your medications are in the mail, um, so how has that affected the local pharmacies? Um, it definitely took a toll because once, the pharmacy benefit manager uh, fills the prescription at their mail order facility, it blocks us out from doing anything. So even if the doctor calls in a prescription, it's technically been filled and on its way, unless we can catch it before it leaves the facility. Some insurances will do short-term overrides, some won't. So some people had to pay out of pocket without insurance because the mail didn't get to them. And it was just sitting at the Vineyard Haven or Agritown Post Office for a couple weeks in those containers out back waiting to be delivered. And some people get insulin in the mail, which is very difficult since it has to be refrigerated and all that. Wow. So one of the things that um, happens too, this kind of new, and, and I don't know if it happens in every community, but it certainly does on Martha's Vineyard. And it rattles, especially our seniors, is we're used to calling the doctor's office and saying, oh, my pill bottle says no refills. Will you send a refill? And now when you do that, you have a message from the doctor's office saying, don't call us for refills, call the pharmacy. And, yeah. and that's a big change from what we're used to doing. And it's kind of growing everybody. So what's that all about? Um, now that everything's done electronically, uh, the, our system is sort of linked to theirs. So you call us and tell us that you're out of refills and we send electronic requests to the doctor and it goes directly to your profile on their system. So it's more of a, a fail safe kind of thing because what we filled, the doctor's seeing and can refill it and it matches up correctly with their records so that there's nothing on a voicemail that might be wrong and a nurse call it in wrong kind of thing. It matches up and it's been working out pretty well. And I didn't our realize system, that. It's a safety measure, huh? I didn't realize yeah. that. That's great. And when but we when fill the happens. last refill on people's prescriptions, our system automatically sends a request for a new prescription so that hopefully by the, the next fill, we already have it and we don't need to. That's a wonderful addition also, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this, just this notion that this is kind of like, it's just kind of seamless. So, it, so, so when a person calls you to refill the prescription, then you email the doctor and so you it, but that is that just a notice or is that a do they also have to send send something back to you authorizing the, the yeah. refill they have to authorize it as a new prescription and it comes back to us or they can deny it and say they want to see the patient and then we have to relay it to the patient that they need to call the office and make an appointment or speak to somebody in the office because there's a question about it but for the most part if it's the regular med and you see your doctor on a regular basis it gets approved it's got, right and, and it takes it sounds like it just takes one step out of what is always just a hassle, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of going back and forth. In terms of in terms of your 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 patients, your, you know, your customers, it just makes the life a lot. Sounds like it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, and I know it is confusing to a lot of people, and especially the elderly that have been doing it that way for so long, calling their doctor. It's how they're doing it now, and it's how it's going to be, and it works pretty well. One of the other things that I found interesting during the pandemic and when people were, especially during the mail crisis, is, you know, we started looking, calling the pharmacies, all the different pharmacies that we work with on the vineyard to just find out, okay, if, if my patient was used to getting their medication from a mail away pharmacy in 90 day quantities, and, and because, you know, they've been sort of, you know, instructed into it. or... Well, maybe, but you know, it, the farmers, you know, the insurance companies have strong bonds with their, um, with the people that they have the contracts with. But what we were finding in many cases, not all, but in many cases is the, the local farm, the difference. We thought the difference would be ginormous, you know, like hundreds mm -hmm. of dollars. And the difference in getting it from a local family owned pharmacy 
versus getting it from, you know, the big farm, uh, mail away pharmacies was like $4 or something. Can you speak to that a little bit generically? Yeah, it's very, usually very negligible difference in price. Um, I would say 98% of insurance plans, you have the option to either use mail order or use your pharmacy of choice that's in, in network with your insurance plan. Um, there's a couple insurance plans that after a couple of fills each year, you do have to use the mail order, but that's in your contract when you signed up. Um, and for the most part, most people don't see a huge price difference or not enough of a difference to say, oh, I'm going back to mail order. Um, some specialty meds we can't fill, but so th those have to go through mail order and that's just a contract with insurances. But for the most part, regular meds, maintenance meds, it's, you probably wouldn't even notice and it would be worth your time than going to the post office. Right, if you think about it, do I wanna go downtown to Leslie's even with the parking issue on Main Street and Vineyard Haven yeah. versus, you know, do I wanna go stand in line at the post office? Yeah, you know, that's and go crazy. back four or five times yeah. trying to get it. Because the tracking says it's there and the post office hasn't really tracked yeah. it in yeah. their side yet. Oh yeah, it's been, it's been an issue. So there's definitely ch patient choice and a lot of insurances, they call you and send notices pushing towards their mail order facilities because it's cheaper for them. Um, and they hope that you kind of just go along with it. But you usually have a choice. And it's worth it to just call the pharmacy and ask them, right? I mean, just call yeah. your favorite pharmacies, you know, whichever pharmacy you use, and they'll tell you. Yeah. And as long as we're in network with that insurance plan, then we would be able to help you. Yep. And, 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 and speaking of that, David, if you were, I, when, when I think about the medic, once again, these, I'm talking all seniors, right? So it's everything, everything is Medicare or Medicare Advantage, whatever, right? And and when I and when I think about the the plans that that I, it seemed like there were about like I want to say twenty eight plans or something like that or or um, of Medicare D drug plans last last in the last cycle like last year right for New England I believe yeah yeah so so and 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 do all of those cover um, are all of those doing Martha's Vineyard. And for all, and and when you you say that you 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 know you you have you are relationships with many of them, can you give us a sense you know order of magnitude sense like out of the all of the drug plans that are going, how many of them have, have you know are you are you in contract with? Because my sense would be quite a few. All of the Medicare's this year, at least that I've come across, I've only not been contracted with one, and that is because they did not want to contract with the local stores. They only wanted to contract with Shop and Shop and Eggertown. Um, and it was one of the Walgreens insurance plans. Walgreens has three different plans. One of them, I can't remember what plan exactly, but one of them we do not take. I but see, the rest of them, I'm pretty sure we, we are contracted with the rest of them. And that's great. So once again, for people who are watching saying, you know, they'd really rather deal with the, you know, with the local guy, but Oh my God, is he in? You know, is he is he is he part of the system? The likelihood is that he is. So, Sandy, I was just thinking. So, when when it, when it's Medicare D time, right? We should really have David back just to talk about some of this stuff, right? When, He's really you know, when, good at that too. When everybody's yeah. because everybody's trying to, you know, there's that month, you know, like November. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And for the people who aren't trying to figure out, I really try to tell people go figure it out. You know, don't just sign on to your old plan just because it's complicated, right? That's that's the reason why so many people get stuck with the wrong plan is because yeah. they just, you know, they don't they just check the box and they don't realize, oh my God, the plan changed and all of a sudden they're stuck, you know? Because so there's a lot of tools really you can use. That. Right. There's a lot of tools you can use on the Medicare sign up to find out which plan covers your exact meds that you're taking, uh, the pharmacy that you want to use, that kind of stuff that can point you to the right plan and it might not be your plan or it might be your plan that you already are on but there's a lot of things you can do but the elderly are not very technology savvy as the younger crowd so it 
can kind of seem daunting. That's the biggest challenge. Way. That's the biggest challenge, right? Because that audience kind of by definition, they're my people, which means like me, they don't get it. They just don't. They're, well, if they, let me put it this way. They don't want to face it. If they're like me, they don't want to face it. You know, it's like, you mm -hmm. can, it's like, oh God, you know, I can, if I really have to, I'll do it, but I really don't want to. Yeah. And if you have the option of just checking the box, check the box, you know? So, so Sandy, we may be, I don't know, I don't know if his fees are going to go up for showing up on our show, <laughs> inviting him back, but, but we I would be to. very happy to. That'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you so much, David. And thank you for everything that the Leslie's and Conroy's and, and Vineyard Scripts and Stop and Shop, I still call them Triangle Pharmacy. I mean, I think that the pharmacists have all stepped up in a big way through this to help, their, to help their clients get their customers, you know, get what they needed. And um, for those customers that let us know that they were struggling um, or that we could dig around and figure out we're struggling, um, it worked. It, it worked. We got in the way of a lot of people that could have harmed themselves um, by making the access better. And, um, and, and you particularly and Leslie's Pharmacy have been so incredibly giving of your time and energy around helping people figure this out and, and get what they needed. And I'm really grateful. Thank you. And I'm very happy to do it. But David, thank thank you so much. And once again, speaking as a true layman, right? I, I'm I am I am Frank and Mary. This has been incredibly educational for me, and I think will be for a lot of people in terms of having them better understand the role that you play in this, right? Which is a really mm -hmm. really important role, and 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 kind of opening up their minds to the possibilities for really developing a relationship with with you know with a local pharmacy, you know, which you don't you, which you think of. In some places, oh God, the local pharmacy, but that's that's a big deal. This is a big, big deal. deal. Big deal. So David, thank you so much. Sandy, once again, thank you for finding us a terrific guest. Folks, I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And I will guarantee you that if 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 David's willing to do it, we'll have him back in the fall. So we so for all of you trying to scratch, you know, scratching your head saying, Oh, it's time for Medicare D again. We can we can kind of go through it and see if we can help you out. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sandy. And folks, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much.